So a few weeks ago, while I was in California, I met up with another YouTuber called Cruising the Land. He popped up a couple of years ago, and I started following him because he buys and shows some serious land cruisers, all different types. So he invited me out to some car show, and we met up there. And when he came out to the show, he brought this with him. This Land Cruiser is absolutely beautiful. I've never seen one in the United States that looks quite like this, and it's on 37s. So seeing how Jamie was nice enough to do a walk around on my truck, I had to do a walk around on his truck. And the funny thing is, is I lost this footage. I could not find it to save my life. And this morning, while editing something else, I stumbled upon it. So here it is. If you want to check this truck out, you're going to want to sit back, you're going to want to relax, and you're going to want to check this out. Before we start this video, I'm going to ask you to hit that subscribe button as well as the little bell next to it so you're notified of all new videos. Here we go. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode of Jailbreak Overlander. It has been a while since I have done a rare vehicle walk around because in the last 30,000 miles, to be perfectly honest, I haven't come by anything that I thought was worthy. And then I got hit up by Jamie from um, Cruising the Land YouTube channel, which I follow because this guy collects land cruisers and exotic ones like most people collect baseball cards. So I came out here and met him and had no idea that he was going to bring that. Tell the camera what we're looking at exactly. Yeah. Year, make, model, and how you got it. 1992 HZJ73. I was pretty lucky. This one fell in my lap. A guy had this in New Jersey, so he, he already did all the importing and everything with that 25-year import rule. I had an FJ40 that was lifted, looked great. He wanted my 40, which was for sale, and offered a trade. So I traded, best trade I've ever done in my life. Uh, love it. It's a diesel, so it's the 1HZ diesel engine made by Toyota, 1992. Ugh. That's a 70 series, but more particular HZJ73. They made three models of this. This is the biggest one which with the FRP top, uh, which you can remove, which makes this thing pretty badass with bars inside. But why don't we walk around it? We will. We're standing so close because I had no intention on doing this. We're at a car show and I came light. But when I saw this, we got to get this on film one way or the other. So here we go. All right. All right, brother, show me what you got here. So in getting this truck, uh, I was just telling Richie, I never was actively shopping for a 70 series, but when this guy was on Facebook, um, was he actually said anybody got a 40 series I'm looking to trade so I think about 30 to 40 people in the US said trade with me trade with me he was being hit up by everybody but he liked my FJ40 uh, a red one 1974 that was on 35s lifted with a, a spring over axle lift so because you could see this one's lifted that that was his style he, he liked that um, Again, not thinking that I ever wanted to get a 70 series. Once I saw this, the way it was lifted, I loved it, just sight unseen. So sight unseen for both of us, we just talked about our trucks and we shipped them across the country because I'm in California, he's in New Jersey, and we traded. Again, love it, love it. Right hand drive, because this is a JDM, you know, Japanese domestic market. But I've noticed many of your vehicles are right hand drive, so you're old hat at this now. Yeah. Because I've always been afraid to drive a right hand drive because left hand drive my whole life, but no problem, huh? This was my first one, and I gotta say, 
I took to it like a duck to water. I love it. I awesome. Love it. it is so much fun. It gives you a different experience. And I got to be honest, I think I like right hand drive better than left hand drive. I like it better. So pretty cool things like an ARB bar. It's got kind of like the retro uh, Warren winch, you know, that elevated. It's not going to go on every truck. It's obviously. got the legendary Warren winch. That is a serious machine. The 8274. Um, you know, one thing that I love, it's got 37s, right? And it's not every day. I think it's pretty rare you see 37s on a 70 series. It looks so perfect on them, though. I got to say, they look like 35s unless you say they're 37s. Yeah. Because yep. the truck is 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 beefy, man. It's got a serious presence. It just sits right. You it know? does. I totally mind, agree. It just looks like it was meant to be. Um, pro comp wheels, and I love the Coopers. First time I had a set of SS, STT Coopers. We were, I love them. We were just talking about these yesterday. That's a much more aggressive tire than those KM3s. He's yeah. got the same thing, 37s on his Forerunner. I got KM3s too, and yeah, I dig these. Now, one one thing that's cool, again, right-hand drive. Um, I don't know if I can do it on this side. We'll do, we'll do it on the passenger side. We'll walk Okay. But, but I don't know if you can see inside. You can see the- I got uh, the inside. Yeah. I got. I even got that. Okay. I got everything, I thought. The bars. Yeah, the oh, bars hell yeah. Well. Everything. I opened the back, everything. I was, I was busy. I was busy. So tell me about the cockpit. So cockpit, you got your important stuff here, like hub lock. So it's got the E hub lock and then your four wheel drive. And of course the coveted triple lock, triple lock, lock right there. Three lock box. So you're locking your front, your center and your rear and you have electronic hub lock up front. So this, so this is a goat, you know, it is. Yeah. And I, it's, this is a complete unicorn. Um, let me, you said something about everyone thinks they went from the 40 to the 60 series. And that's a, that's a misnomer. Well, so the 40 is a heavy duty truck, right? That right. Tight as heavy duty to go anywhere. So the successor to that is the 70 series. They also had the 60 series, but a 60 series is a wagon. That's what they advertised it as because that, that's before SUVs existed and uh, it's a wagon. Right. This is their heavy duty truck. Heavy duty, duty because of the suspension. Uh, you know, on this one, I obviously have spring over axle. That's why it's so lifted. Um, and then with the big tires. But just, uh, well, how does the spring over axle, how is the, is it affect anything? Is there any regrets or is it just no, working out? It works out, yeah. No kidding. The previous owner did all that, but on the road, it just drives amazing. I, I you know, it's not just a mall crawler. I crawl. No, no, I'm hip. I, I think everybody that's watching knows if you don't know who Cruising the Land is, again, links will be below, but he definitely uses his vehicles as intended. And I could back that up because the day prior to shooting this video, Cruising the Land and another YouTuber called Sandy Cats, we all met up and went to Big Bear and he brought his FZJ80 with him and he absolutely wheeled it. It was amazing.
Now, I just threw in that clip so people could see that he actually uses these vehicles. I was skeptical until I four-wheeled with him. He did not mess about. Back to the walk-around. High center of gravity. I just had one instance where we were tipping over, and I told my uh, the guy in the back, I'm like, get behind me! <laughs> so we got more weight, and we were okay. So high center of gravity is pretty much the only thing with that. But, you know, as far as uh, in city driving, not a problem. Highway driving, not a problem. You want to open up that back so we can check it, take a peek at it? I've already got footage of the the actual actuators on your differentials. I was under there, I got that. If there's anything special you want to point out, I love the I love the barn doors. Love the license plate. Yep, yeah, yeah, goat LC. <sighs> barn doors, yeah, so again, not clean back here, but. That's it. This is beautiful, man. The only thing I have to think of, because I haven't removed the uh, fiberglass top yet, but when I do, the doors will come off, and I think I'll just put a webbing net in the back. Oh, that's the only one downfall. When you take the top off... I have solid doors on the side. So I'll figure that out. I know you will, and I'm, I'm excited to see what you figure out for that. I'll have to do it like early spring and have it off for the whole summer, so... It's such a... I mean, I was, I've always... Everyone knows this. I've always been partial to the lines on the 80 series. But the lines on this particular vehicle, they're so utilitarian, purposeful, but they still look phenomenal. So here's what's crazy. They still make these trucks to this day, just not for our market. So like you say, Richie, that the lines, it, it's this line here that's in the 76, the 79, you know, the 70, the 73 here, of course. I just love that line. Me, too. I totally line, agree, brother. The whole body. And then for this series, because in, in the 76, the whole front is coming out, like it's flush. I just love how it goes in. And that's kind of a design cue. They did that to take a piece of the FJ40. Yep. Which has, you know, it kind of tapers in on the hood. I love how Toyota's always managed to roll it over. My only, I'm not going to actually say it, never mind. I was going to say the, the FJ Cruiser. But okay. I'm not going to make those people mad at me. So the seat. The seat so when is you hit suspended. A major bump, you're like, vroom, 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 just like a, just like a big. And that's Toyota keeping it utilitarian, not not imagining this truck would end up in America one day with an actual suspension under it. They give you one in the seat. Toyota's amazing. Yeah. All right. So, I, I love like you don't have to get into. Starts up every time, just like that. So simple. Wow. You know, like our gassers are like, rum, 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 yep, rum. This yep. is just like instant. Instantaneous, Instantaneous, man. It is so clean in there, brother. Okay, so everyone's going to think right off the bat that that's a Overland auxiliary battery, and that is not the case. No, that's not the case. Am I am I right? Diesel trucks have two batteries, so but it, I guess it's great because you have that extra power. But if I was to put some lights, because this is 24 volt Japanese system, I would just go off of one of the batteries. And that's, you're safe, you're good to go. Yeah. It's just 12 volts. Yeah. So the way yeah. they wire those in series or in parallel makes it 24. Yeah. Okay, I get that. Exactly. Man, this is, look, this is clean, brother. That's the 1HC. I should do a shampoo at some point, but you know, no need. It, it, I could see if there's any leaks, which there's none. Right. This engine runs like a top. Um, the 1HC, it's kind of like the one million mile motor. Um, yeah, it's a unicorn. Yeah. It's a unicorn without a doubt. Did you have to do anything to this when you got it? I've done nothing to it. So the only thing I would do is a timing belt. So those of you who know like the 100 series Land Cruisers, it's a big job because you got to take a bunch of stuff off. The timing belt is right here, visible oh. right at the top of the... Japan, thing, man. So. And you won't have to do that. You got another 150, 200 to go. Yeah. Well, yeah, every 100,000 miles. Is said. that the case? Yeah. And, and this has just below 100,000 miles on it, so. It's still not even broken in, man. What a sweet ride. What a sweet ride. The the. So we're at, I meet up with Jamie at a car show, and I mean, we're talking serious vehicles here, and the amount of interest on this, I mean, as soon as I rolled in, it's the only truck I wanted to look at. This is definitely, I, a, I, this is a, it's a showstopper. Truth be known, I think I got the attention from the spillover from Richie's truck. No, no, no. <laughs> you got crazy attention. I, yeah, I, well, I, it's because they don't know what they're looking at. You know what I mean? But a lot of people did know what this was right off the bat. I'd kill for one of these, man. Right-hand drive always worried me. That's all. Easy. Yeah, let me get that line so I don't forget. And I love how the mirror is right here, too. I'm not usually a huge looks guy, but this just looks badass. What's going on? 
So, you have 80 series Land Cruisers. How does this compare? It's, it's a whole different world. I love my 80. Um, it's just like a V8 in a 100 series or a 200 series. They're all different, right? Um, so this one, I get in it, I just feel the utilitarian factor. Love that it's right-hand drive, and then it's just heavy duty. I'm not going anywhere quick, but I can get this up to 80 miles an hour on the highway, even on the 37s, at like 21, 2200 RPM. So I call this my gas sipper out of all my Land Cruisers. Imagine that. <laughs> A what? gas sipper Land Cruiser. I've never, you don't usually hear those two words in the same sentence. Would you ever sell this by chance? Hell no, this, this is going in the will. Uh, so I have daughters, no sons, and uh, one of my daughters, she drives a diesel 60 series, an HJ61. She loves it. I said I was gonna sell it one day, she's like, hell no. Um, my kids don't drive this, because I'm driving it, I love it. But this will be in my will. I think this is something that stays in the family. It's unique, because if I sold it, I asked myself, could I ever get one like this again? And the answer is, probably not. The triple locked, almost zero miles, right-hand drive, diesel legend motor, the million mile motor. So that's that's a lot of things you'd be searching for a long time and I bet you'd regret it if you ended up selling it. Absolutely. All right, so, Jamie, I really appreciate your time. You got anything else you want to tell people? That was it, no, just Richie, uh, I'll just say, I followed Richie for, for a couple of years now. We met today for the first time. Richie's the real deal, <laughs> his, his rig, I mean, I, I was telling Richie, like, your truck looks really great on YouTube and all that, but man, when you see it in person, it's like another level up. So. I have, I have, um, I have issues. <laughs> I don't ever want anybody to look at it and say, well, you should have did this. I try to get it all done. Oh, it's, it's just all, about done, but. It's all done. It was a showstopper at uh, nah. South Orange County Cars and Coffee. Well, here. I don't know about that. At any rate, Jamie, I appreciate you inviting me out. I don't know how many people have invited me to to show up at events like this and for what, whatever reason, this you were the guy I wanted to see and I had no idea you were bringing this with you. So this was well worth it in more ways than one. Awesome. So I appreciate your time. Links to everything to do with cruising the land and Jamie's trucks will be in the description box below. Brother, thank you for your time. We are out. Later. Later, man. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like, share and subscribe and leave a comment below and I will try to return the favor. We are out. All right, guys, I have not done a video in a while on a really rare rig because I haven't come across any really rare rigs. You fucking asshole. <laughs> oh, it's cute.